Hey guys, this is Lucas from Better Coding Academy. And in this video, we are going to be putting together a microservices application. So it's going to be a pretty simple application, kind of similar to a very basic Gumtree. Uh, we're going to be able to have listings and we're going to be able to have users uh, sign up and also log in to the website as well, and just be able to post listings once they've logged in. It's comparatively very simple, but it's really just about the architecture. And I wanna show you how I structured that for this project. So we're going to be using Node.js for the backend and React for the front end. And in order to work with these components, we are going to be using Docker Compose. So now let's jump straight into it. So the first thing we're going to do is just open up our terminal over here, and we're just going to get a couple of directories into here. So the first one we're going to do is called API Gateway. So let me explain what the API Gateway is going to be. So essentially inside of our application, and you should see a diagram pop up on the screen about now, which I will add in in post-production, is we are going to have this diagram. So we're going to have an API gateway. We're going to have a classifieds app, which is going to be for our front end. We're going to have a listing service and also a user's service. So you notice that we have two services here, essentially a listing service and a user service. And these are actually connected to the classifieds app via the API gateway. So the API gateway is responsible for kind of controlling uh, the data flow within the backend of the system. It also helps to um, keep all of our authentication in one place and just basically manage essentially the business business flow for this particular application. Now, a quick disclaimer, in the case of microservices, uh, the architecture can really vary between company to company. It can also vary between different use cases depending upon uh, the actual design that people want to go for. In this case, my design is far from optimal, even in my opinion. I feel like there are many things that I can improve upon. And also for the interest of time, I have actually chosen to take a few shortcuts, but without in my opinion, sacrificing the quality of the actual microservices architecture itself. So we're going to have API gateway and we're going to have another directory called classifieds app. This is going to be our React app. We're going to have listing service which is going to be uh, for our listings. So it's going to manage uh, all of the listings that go inside of our classifieds app. And we're also going to have a user's service, which is going to control things like authentication and uh, other stuff like that. So now that we have these four over here, what we're going to do is let's just quickly set up both the listing service and also the user service. Because they're so similar, we can kind of do one and then just copy paste it into the other one. And it actually works out really well. So in the case of the listing service, we're going to first do yarn init hyphen y, just so we can uh, get it set up, get it started. And uh, let's have a look at this one here. So we should have a package JSON. Let me just put this one over on the right here. And now we're going to add a few basic things into here. So the first thing we're going to add uh, as a dev dependency is Babel Watch, which we will use uh, to watch our code essentially, uh, just so that we can see changes locally, um, even within Docker. And then we're going to add as dependencies at Babel forward slash core, at Babel forward slash polyfill, at Babel forward slash preset env, and then also Babel plugin module resolver. And we're going to press enter. So now that we've added these, let's uh, right click here, new file, and let's create a file called babel.config.js. So now inside of this file here, we're going to write into here, module.exports is equal to, we're gonna put in the plugins, uh, and then we're going to put in a module resolver as the plugin here. So remember how we in included a babel plugin module resolver. So that's this one here. And we are going to do alias and then alias hash root to dot slash SRC. And we need to put double quotes around that. So just like that, and we have our plugins, uh, hash root to SRC, and then presets, and we do another square brackets, and then at Babel forward slash preset end, and then we need to do targets, and then node is current. So basically this just sets up preset env in a way that works for our node.js. So we have our presets here, our plugins over here, and this is our babel.config.js. So now inside of package.json, under the script section here, uh, we're just going to go like that, and then we are going to add in a script for watch. So the watch script is going to do babel watch and then hyphen L, capital L, src forward slash index.js. Now the reason I use a hyphen capital L is because uh, this flag basically means that instead of waiting to detect file system events for changing, it actually does a regular poll on the files. And the reason I use that is because I've actually kind of run into issues uh, where it doesn't actually pick up on changes and I had to manually restart, but I find that polling is just far more consistent. So we do something like this and then we right click new file, src forward slash index.js and we're just going to include something like import path from path and then do console.log working and the reason we do this is just so we can uh, see if this line will give us any error which it shouldn't uh, if it does that means that Babel isn't working or something like that so now that we have this file here that should be just fine 
So now over here, we've got our listing service. Now, if we actually type a uh, yarn watch, we should be able to just say working on the page here. And then we can control C that to kind of get rid of that for now. Uh, what we're going to add now is right click on listing service and we're going to add a Docker file. So as I said, we are going to be using Docker quite extensively for this project. And uh, the Docker file here allows us to configure Docker specifically for this service. It's not going to be something that we're going to use for the whole thing. That's uh, Docker Compose, which we will set up uh, later on. But our Docker file is specifically for this directory. Um, and you'll see what I mean uh, by that is that this Docker file is the configuration for this container. So our listing service is obviously, uh, we've designed it to be one container here in that it contains uh, one process with like the Node.js process and we run that on a single container. Our user service would have a separate container as would the API gateway. Now for the classifieds app, I actually won't be using a container. And the reason for that is I just find running React apps on my own computer is a lot easier. And in the case of production, generally, uh, you kind of want to keep it uh, as plain static HTML anyways. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to like have a Docker container and set up a lot of logic around that. You generally want to try and keep your React app as minimal as possible. So now we have our Docker file here. We're going to add into here. First, we're going to write from node colon 12. So what this means is that this Docker file is based off an existing Docker image and the existing Docker image is going to be node colon 12. So this one exists on the so-called Docker repo and you can actually command click this, which will open it uh, on the browser here. So we can open that. So now let's just wait for that to load real quick. And this one here, you'll notice that it has all of these uh, published online. So basically this allows us to extend off of this one, which is actually published by the official Node.js people. So this one's quite legit. And what we're going to do is we're going to do copy dot to forward slash opt forward slash app. Now the actual directory you choose here isn't that important, but it is a Linux file system. So you have like weird folder names like slash opt slash TMP slash val, all that kind of stuff. We're going to use a slash opt here and we're going to copy it into a directory called app. So basically everything inside of listing service goes inside of there. And we're going to do work dir is forward slash opt forward slash app. And if we have a look at work dir here, it sets the entry point for any subsequent add copy CMD entry point or run instructions that follow it in the Docker file. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. Run yarn. And this one runs the command. And then we're going to do CMD yarn watch. So this one is the default executable for this container. Now it's a little bit different to run yarn because run yarn basically runs it one time when the container is building and CMD yarn watch runs it every single time you start the container. So then it does this every single time. And this one runs once when the Docker file is being used to actually generate the container. So we're going to save this file real quick. So now we're going to go over here to the side and type docker build dot. So now this will build this whole listing service here and you'll see it's running our thing. So firstly from node 12, copy, work DIR, it's going to run yarn. Yarn is automatically installed inside of the Node.js image, which is pretty cool. So it kind of does its own thing over here and then it will uh, finish off and then CMD yarn watch and it does that. So now we have uh, our essentially our container generated for listing service. So that's pretty cool. And uh, we have this one working, but now what we can actually do is copy all of this and we'll grab that to that. And then we are going to paste it directly inside of users service. Uh, but obviously we're going to go into package JSON, change the name here from listings to users. And we're going to just open up a new uh, terminal here, go to users service, type yarn again, just to uh, refresh the yarn.log because with the new name and all that kind of stuff. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to do Docker build Dot again. So now it's finished building and we have these two both done. What we're actually going to do now is just close both of these and now we're going to create our Docker Compose file. So we're going to create it in the root of this project and we have to call it docker-compose.yml. So this is a YAML file. YAML is kind of like an extension of JSON. You can think of it that way. It's just a, quite a powerful way of declaring configuration. So now we have this file here. Inside of this file here, we're going to write uh, version is going to be number three. So the different versions have kind of slightly different syntaxes. I'm using version three here. So uh, services, the first one we're going to add is listing service. And inside of listing service, this one is going to be built using dot slash listings service. So if you remember that we've already built our container uh, specifically for listing service. So now we have a container uh, for that. And then we're going to essentially use that to run our project. And then this one here, we're going to write depends on, and we're going to go here and just write listings service DB. So what this means is that this one depends upon listing service DB to run first. So that it kind of depends upon the database here, obviously. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to leave this like that, but also with volumes. And we're going to write dot slash listings service, if I can spell correctly, 
uh, is to forward slash opt forward slash app. So if you remember inside of listing service here, we actually use uh, forward slash opt forward slash app. Uh, and the reason that we use this volumes is basically this allows this directory to be synced with that one. So that when we make any changes inside of here, uh, for example, Babel Watch will automatically pick up on those, even though it's technically inside of a container. So we have that like directory mirroring, which is really cool. So now we're going to grab this and we're going to go down here and we're going to call this one users service. So basically everything's the same, except this one is a users service service here, but you'll notice that we haven't actually included users service DB and also listing service DB. So we're going to do that now and let's just add this one here. So this one's going to be our listings service DB. And this one we're going to have uh, environment and we have to set a few things here. So this one is going to be based off of the uh, built in or well, the public uh, MySQL Docker image. So this Docker image takes in uh, quite a few different uh, configuration options uh, it's in order for it to work properly, including like, for example, the root password and stuff like that. So that's what we're going to be doing here. We've got an environment and we do MySQL root password is equal to password. And we're going to do MySQL database. So this is the default database it creates for us is equal to DB. So now that we've got that, let's do image and we're going to do MySQL 5.7.20. That's the one we're going to be using. And then for the ports, we're going to leave that out for now. Let's just copy this, go down here and let's call this one users service DB. Make sure you get the indentation right. Uh, it's kind of like Python in that you have to have them all on the same level here. So make sure yours matches mine before we continue. So you got user service, user service DB, listing service, listings service DB. So now that you have this, let's go over here and let's close uh, one of these here on the side. And in the remaining one, let's go back to microservices demo. And inside of here, we're going to do docker hyphen compose up. So this will run the whole thing here. So we're going to recreate uh, these ones and you'll see that we have both of them running uh, parallel to each other, users service one and listing service one after both the databases are running. And now you see both of them here say working. Now, if I go into listing service and I change this working here to be spelt with an E for example, and I save, you'll notice that it automatically changes even though it's inside of the container. And it's the same thing with user service. And the reason that that works is because we have this volumes thing here running. So volumes is really pretty cool and it allows us to kind of do a lot more development work here uh, a lot more easily.